So today I will be talking um, about uh, paint abatement project. Um, and some of you probably have seen some of these around in Salt Lake City. So I'm going to tell you actually about the first one that was created in Salt Lake City. And I was like involved um, in that. But before I talk about Salt Lake City, I want to say that um, the idea of like paper payments, um, it was something that um, students at the University of Utah were already like um, exploring. Um, as you can see in these like images here, this is like from a class that I um, taught in Chicago. Um, and that is a class that we hope to um, teach in the future when we can travel again, right? <laughs> uh, it's called Chicago Lab. And um, we work there with the Puerto Rican um, community and um, something that they would like to see there um, is like murals that represent the culture of the, of the Puerto Rican community. As you can see, there's like an indigenous uh, symbol uh, here. Um, you might know that um, Latinos um, have like, uh, they're multiracial, right? So they, um, are white and African and, and indigenous, and it's important for um, Latinos to highlight all their different um, cultures. And uh, but uh, there was a student actually in architecture that created these um, images. And uh, it's not only about the design, right? So you can have an artist um, or um, I call it artist. So anyone who does art is, is an artist. So maybe some of you might not consider yourself artists, but you do do art. I think that you should <laughs> consider yourself an artist if you, if you again, enjoy art and you um, do art. But it's also about um, having the community come together and give you ideas, right? So um, the students didn't know much about the culture of this place, right? There's not a lot of Puerto Ricans in Utah, uh, but they went to Chicago and they listened to the stories of people and what people have to say, and they started to see what were the, the values of the community. And that's why it's so important to do community engagement, because you can come with all your technical um, ideas and um, with like, again, things that you know and you have been training, and that's why you're going to school because you're becoming a specialist in, in something. And, um, and you are, or are training to be an expert, right? But experts cannot only rely on their uh, own expertise. They have to rely on the expertise of the, of the community. And the expertise of the community is more around the values and what they care about. And so that's why it's important to do community engagement and community um, involvement. And um, at the end, the idea is like to create something that um, with your um, technical expertise and with the values of the community is something that everybody can um, get behind after doing much um, collaboration and something that it results in a higher quality of life and in this case, an activated uh, intersection. Um, this again, it was a model, so it's not. It, we didn't end up creating this um, mural, but like some of these um, ideas actually were um, implemented um, in in Salt Lake City uh, later later on. So as um, just a thinking about um, the the idea of like painting of pavement, it's, as I said before, has to do with placemaking, right? Because you're choosing a particular place, a particular in intersection, and it should reflect the, the values of, of that um, place. But uh, it also has other technical components, like thinking about um, traffic safety, the idea of like, does this like slow traffic um, or not? It's also about community engagement because it brings everyone to be talking about these values, but not only that, but to also like implement um, what you're um, going to do. And it's also uh, public art. And we know that public art is very important um, for making a city more beautiful and therefore more um, livable. So paint a pavement is at the intersection of all these different 
um, concepts. And the, the residents in Salt Lake City have been thinking actually about in doing a paint up pavement project since 2012. And one um, of the uh, places that first were talking about it, it was the uh, Sugar House Community Council. And um, this was like, they were envisioning to do a project, which actually they didn't do, um, but the idea and the conversations started and the city started to think about this is a possibility. Um, and the, um, the rationale of like, why doing this will matter, um, it was in this, like, if you look at this, uh, the, what they wrote is that it's low cost, that it will be something self-organized, um, that the community will do, that the, the state didn't have to, to do it, right? Or the city, that is a great art project that it would uh, transform, uh, it would become more or um, have like traffic safety, it will create a same sense of place and community building, and um, that it will also highlight the, the assets of, of a neighborhood, which is such an important um, concept. And uh, so one of the first things that the city started to do after listening to residents in um, Sugar House, it was like, okay, so let's start thinking about some cities and how have they done this um, before. And they um, picked some case studies looking at um, a boulder um, in, in Colorado, then um, Seattle, San Paul, and uh, Portland. And this is something that you will see a lot in the world of planning in that maybe there's not an ordinance or something that it exists um, somewhere else, but um, it has to be regulated. Like many, probably many of the ideas that you guys come up with, somebody has to think, okay, can we do this? Does this like actually, can we do it legally, right? You have to think about, uh, we have to think about who will maintain it and how we do it all these different ideas. So case studies are great because you can always find a, an idea of, of something that you have or something similar um, in another place. So that's exactly what the city did. Um, and they saw like, what are the ordinances and what is the code and what are the stipulations that they have in order to create um, their own. And uh, so then the city created the, uh, just the, the guidelines for how to do a, a paint a pavement. Um, so there will actually, there's a, sto a study that it was like needed. So you needed to pick an intersection that it will have like fewer than 2,500 vehicles um, going there per, per day. Um, and it can be, it, this means that also it's not like a major um, road and that there will be no transit or uh, bus um, routes. Um, and part of this has some, something to do with like, um, it's hard to deroute um, the bus while this is like being made. And, um, and also the idea is that um, th there's a lot, a lot of wear and tear, just depending on like how many vehicles are going there. So you want to like have something that it will be there for a long time. Um, another thing that they, they said is that it cannot like mimic uh, official ways of like um, slowing, slowing down the traffic. So it, it cannot be competing with like stop signs and yield signs and things like that. And you cannot put any words. And part of this is because they, they didn't want things that were corporate. So if they, let's say that you have like a place that is sponsoring this um, so you don't want to have like logos of that place or like um, words that perhaps might be um, offensive to some, or to some people, right? But not to other people. So they said, you know, no words and, and so on. So again, there's some, some, some regulations that are, um, or some guidelines that were put together about how, how to do it. And the other thing that you needed that it was very important is like signatures from your neighboring businesses and residents um, saying that it was okay. So you needed to have a lot of like community engagement and support behind um, doing this, which is always a great thing. Um, all right, so I already told you about the Sugar House Community Council and how that 
was leading to the city to actually look at this and create an ordinance. But I think that sometimes people get discouraged after much planning when the regulation doesn't exist. So the Sugar House Community Council um, didn't end up doing the, uh, the mural. But there was another community council in the city that was like highly interested in um, doing them. And they, they are the ones who became um, the first ones to create a paint painting project, not only in Salt Lake City, but in all of Utah. After this regulation uh, was created, they were um, actually like with the idea of like uh, making it happen. But the idea actually didn't come from themselves. It didn't come from the leadership. They had like a speed dating event of summer of 2016 because my students um, that um, were working with the, with the Rose Park Community Council, it is a class that is called Leadership and Community Engagement. And uh, I will tell you a little bit of that class just to promote it at the end. But um, the Rose Park Community Council were looking for ideas of like how to better engage the community. And if you have been to any community council meetings, you know that the traditional form of engaging the public in things that are formal is like called the public meeting, right? And it looks like uh, people sitting up front and uh, using rubber rolls, say, uh, saying like, um, uh, using like some language, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the <laughs> Robert rules, um, but it's like a lot of motions and what you approve and yes and nays and it can be kind of uh, too technical um, and not very welcoming. So they wanted, they needed to do that because this is like how all community councils um, do it. And there's like some regulations for that um, because they are like the, the first places um, where there's like some access to government. So they, they again are, are instituted at the city level, but they wanted to do something more fun. So the students came up with the idea, how about like you do like a sort of like speed dating, but it will be with like the fire department and the traffic um, and transportation department and with like the housing and neighborhood department and you invite the chairs uh, or the executive directors of these organizations and then people will come in and they will rotate and they will have the chance to talk to everyone. And they said, great, that's a wonderful idea of like how to do community engagement. And um, there was like the person there in the transportation department and there were like several residents that talked about the idea of creating the paint effacement project. So this is how the idea was born. It wasn't born from um, the, the, the top of like the, the, the leadership of the community council, but it was actually residents coming up with this um, idea. So then uh, I, I was like part of the, I lived in Rose Park. And um, so I was like part of the community council. And actually this is how I um, learned about it because I'm after my students doing this um, event, I didn't know much about what was said in, in, the, in the event, but then at the next meeting, they reported um, back and um, they, uh, they came up with this um, idea of like actually doing like a traffic study and all that. And when I went to the community council meeting, I was um, thinking, well, I want to, to be part of this. Obviously it's my community and the students at the university can bring um, a lot to this, um, to this project. Um, and so I became involved in doing this, but mostly from the research um, perspective. So something that we wanted to know is um, if the paint up payment projects uh, reduce the, uh, like how fast cars are going in a particular intersection, because I was like reading in different places um, the uh, anecdotally that this was true, especially there was like um, a lot of like cases in uh, in Vancouver that they were talking about this, but there was not um, evidence uh, showing that this was actually the case. So I wanted to see, well, uh, as a researcher, just ask the question, does this does anything at all for traffic um, safety? Or we should be thinking more about other things like this is more about 
beautification and more about community engagement than, um, than traffic um, safety. Um, so in order to like do this uh, study, then I, um, I have some students like doing an internship at the Metropolitan Research Center. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Metropolitan Research Center, um, but uh, students like work there and uh, there's like several faculty affiliated with that um, place. So if you were interested in an internship, you can um, think about um, maybe joining the Metropolitan Research Center. And uh, if you like to, like, you can approach me. So that's what happened at that time. There were some students that did an internship at the uh, Metropolitan Research um, Center. And uh, so we had the students um, use like the traffic speedometers. Um, I have it there. I could go and pick it up, but now it's too late. <laughs> so you can see the, um, this, the, the, uh, the gun, the speed gun. And, um, and then so they were seeing like how fast the cars were going and, and uh, in order to like see if again it was slowing down the traffic. So for this, you will have to do it before and after, right? Um, before anything has been installed, um, you do it at particular times, um, and then you do it after the, the installation um, to see if there's any difference. Something else that I did, it was like contact the city to see if they can go put like, um, to go pro cameras and record to see if there was like less um, cars um, coming in in that uh, intersection so we can alt also uh, count the uh, um, the how, how much traffic it was like um, going on in that particular space. Um, we also saw if the cars were doing a full stop or they were doing a rolling stop. So a rolling stop is that they might slow down, right? But they, they keep going. And I feel that the majority of people in these intersections do exactly that, a rolling um, uh, a stop. And then we also counted how many pedestrians will go and cyclists um, and just also assess like what was the interaction to see if there were like any issues. For example, there was a pedestrian that almost like a car ran them over or something like that. So we, we just wanted to um, assess all those um, things. And, um, and uh, I, I didn't mention, but we went like a particular times where there more traffic, like, you know, the rush hours in the morning and then also check like in the weekends because the traffic changes just depending um, on the, the peak hours and, and all that. Um, so then we wanted to um, actually like in, do a, a more broad community engagement because as you know, it's very important to have the support of the community. And um, in these particular cases, not that it's only important, but it's also a requirement, right? That you um, do get signatures from people in the community. And the more support that you show, then uh, your application will look a lot better in the eyes of the decision makers. Um, so it's very important um, to do community engagement um, from both the ethical perspective, but also the requirement um, perspective. Um, and so we have uh, that we did some, as you, as you notice, the dating speed event, but um, uh, and all the, this took a whole year. So there was like, uh, there's a community council meeting every month. So there was like reports and briefings um, from the committee. And I was part of that um, committee that um, was like a subset of the community council, right? Dedicated to uh, make this um, happen. And we did two design charrettes in where we will invite, uh, invited the public um, to like draw in the intersection, what they thought that it should be there. And also there were other things on the table, like which intersections, there were like several intersections that were um, tested to see if they meet the qualifications, like having the 2,500 like less than cars. And then we also listened to the community of why we, they wanted to have the um, paint up pavement there. So we had like several alternatives. We actually have three alternatives in the planning world. This is very important that um, you always create alternatives for people that they can decide on. So you listen first, right? And then you with your technical expertise might come and create some alternatives and then you let people decide 
again. Um, and so we have like also besides the charrettes, like the, a block um, party to, and you will see some pictures of this um, a little bit later, but it's just like a fun uh, event just saying, hey guys, this is like coming. They give us more comments. And then at the end, we, we had the um, actual in installation. So this is like some pictures of like people coming together um, to think about their ideas um, here. And this is like the image of the blog party. And it's important that you always um, go to the, the site where you are planning to do something um, in, in order to like have people visualize what you are planning, planning to do. And uh, usually more people will come out and they will en engage in what's like happening. Um, but this was again a block party as an opportunity to get even more feedback um, before the, the event um, to, took place. And then in this block party, we had uh, the alternatives of, um, well, in that case, uh, I was sp speaking before about the alternatives of the actual site that was chosen. But then after having the site that was chosen um, in other community meetings, we also had like designs and people could choose designs. And the, what you see here is that people like voted in the designs that they um, like the best. So this was more images. And um, once uh, we, we actually chose the design, as you can see here, so we show people this is the design that um, we, would, we would do and invited people to come to the final event. And um, for those of you that might not know, like in the West side, it's about 50% uh, Latino and about 30% um, immigrant. So we did it um, in Spanish and English. And we had like people that spoke both, both languages going and inviting um, residents to be part um, of, of this. So you see like here the, the design um, and um, it's Rose Park. I don't know if you know much of Rose Park, but um, the, it's, it's one of the oldest neighborhoods or it is the oldest neighborhoods in the West side um, in the established in the forties. And um, the whole design is like a rose and the streets have um, the names of like different roses. So of course people chose a rose <laughs> as a way of like representing Rose Park. But also all the colors that you like see here, the idea is that of diversity became very important. As I told you, like 30% of the residents are immigrants. And I'm not only saying from different places in Latin America, but also in, from Africa and from different um, Asian countries and uh, Pacific Islanders. Um, so there's a lot of diversity and that's why people like this idea of like the different colors representing that um, community diversity. Um, so this is like how the idea of like how it will be done. So um, basically the artist, um, which is also someone who was in the community, in the community um, council, just like find out, you know, the center of these and uh, this, it will be like 20 feet, right? Um, from, um, from the center to the other um, side. And then just thinking about, you know, how, how he will do this with the, I, with the um, help of volunteers, right? So the idea is like how you also make it so the community can, um, can come and do this. And I will say that actually this took longer than doing the outside, than people coming in and painting. Um, it goes like pretty quick when you do like the painting. And this is kind of like, you know, this, um, so there was like a, a, a base that it was done before. Um, and again, this took longer than putting the color <laughs> on, on it. And this is like the, the end. Um, so it was like a very fun um, event. And again, this are, there you have it. This is the first paint up pavement. So you probably have seen others after this. So one of the ideas that we had, it was to actually motivate others to do it. And uh, since then there has been 
a lot of people contacting the, the Rose Park Community Council. I have been contacted several times of other people doing murals and uh, there's like several that I know of um, now. Um, and there's like some news that you can read and I can share this PowerPoint and upload it for you guys after this. But here's like a little video that I like you to watch. It's promoting safety, it's bringing the community together and it's just plain fun. Let me show you what I mean, come on. It's American Beauty Drive, which is one of the most iconic streets in Rose Park. So it seemed like a good choice. It's the first ever paint the pavement in Rose Park. Good job, guys. The Rose Park Community Council, neighbors, and the University of Utah all teamed up Saturday to complete the project. Some were in charge of stirring the paint, others gathering information for a safety study. There's been a lot of attention surrounding the 6 North kind of overpass and um, how there have been quite a few fatalities and injuries associated with traffic violations, people speeding, not slowing down, not stopping. That's kind of why we really wanted to push this effort forward. The area Camille Cook is talking about has seen 53 accidents since 2013. A few blocks away, they want to measure traffic before and after the project. Student researchers will look at factors like speed and obeying the four-way stop, look at the results, and see if the painted rows change the way people drive in the area. This is a four-way stop, and we see a lot of people ignoring that. And so hopefully a piece of art makes people slow down and look what's going on. Organizers say it's also a nice way to get to know your neighbor and spend time with the family. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Bye. It's been pretty cool. I think the turnout's been actually great. We had more than we anticipated, so it's been awesome. Community members here say the ultimate goal would be to paint every intersection along American Beauty Drive. It would not only beautify the neighborhood, but remind people to slow down. In Salt Lake City, Lauren Hamley, Fox 13 News, Utah. It's promoting safety. It's all right. So now the question, because like everybody talks about traffic safety, so the idea is like this is like slow down <laughs> the traffic safety to or the the uh, how fast the cars um were were going. And you see here a lot of of numbers. Um, but um the the whole point is that yes, it this did reduce the uh, average speed from before and after. And uh, the uh, the speed there is like 25 miles um, per hour. So um, on you know people went a little bit faster than that. I'm sad to say, but like the it the it dropped by um, three miles um, per hour. Um, so that's like about a reduction of like 12 um, percent. And uh, so which is like very encouraging. So of course like for something like this, um, you will need to do it in several intersections as well. And um, in order to come with like concrete evidence that this is um, absolutely the, the case. But again, these like results are really encouraging. Um, and uh, this again, were some of the, the ob objectives, part of it, as, uh, as uh, I said, it was like to do the first one. So in the video, it said the first one in, in Rose Park, but it was the first one in Utah. And as I said before, since then there has been um, several several ones. Um, and there's like a, a website, again, I will upload this in where there's like more information about um, this um, project. And uh, something I wanted to say, cause she said, oh, there's, we have like the vision that we will do this in every um, intersection. So, um, and that was like in 2016, so it has been uh, a while, but there's like a, a project that the city is doing um, and the Rose Park Community Council has been um, involved in that. And there will be more coming up because we're actually putting in an actual um, study and uh, in a plan for the city for that particular intersection. You saw the intersection that there was a lot of like traffic accidents so that we wanted to like have an, uh, an intervention there. And uh, on, it was like October 17th, which was a Saturday, we did the second one. So it took a while. <laughs> Always with the, with the planning, you know, it takes uh, sometimes longer than, than, than you, that you want, um, but we had like the second one. And I actually did send an announcement to everyone. I was wondering, I don't know, I know that there were like at least like five undergrad students that show up to that event. I don't know if anyone 
from um, here show up to that event. But um, also keep your eyes open because there will be like other ones 